Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with Various Wind for the big top tournament here in Golf Clash the game. The video is sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and before we check out the videos make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Nowadays I do only stream on Twitch. Go to twitch.com slash golf clash Tommy. You do have the link in the description down below. Follow the channel and make sure you follow uh, are fun things that we're doing there by collecting virtual golf balls and that you then can redeem in our in our specific shop so make sure you check it out also our ultimate tournament guides they're by far the best guides on the market you can find on patreon link to patreon is directly in the description down below as well follow the info box on the right hand side for the club distance adjustment elevation adjustment also what ball and club type i suggest you to play with have in mind that these are all suggestions and you are free to play in whatever whatever way you want but there is always a plan from my end with how i set up my shots if you do have any questions you can always comment in the comment section below or that you send in an email to support at goldclashtommy.com let's go to hole number one For hole number one, I would like us to play with the extra mile, even though we are only having four and a half bar topspin, but the wind is kind of going to decide what way we're going to play this hole. So if we do have a tailwind and or a crosswind, we should be trying to bounce over this very big bunker. I'm looking to have the second bounce into the rough above the bunker. Why? It's because we need to slow the ball down to roll out on the fairway. Because if we're going to bounce over the rough, then the ball will 100% roll into the rough at the very top of the course. Maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment, and I'm using max left spin and 4.5 bar top spin as already said. You can see that we hit the rough, the ball slows down and ending up into just at the beginning of the shadow on that fairway. And from there, it's definitely going to be a very interesting play towards the pin. Because here we can decide what to do. It's either to go for a dunk, which is that you aim with your bullseye directly into the hole. Or it is that you are going to use, put yourself with your target on the fairway to bounce the ball up towards the pin. And I decide to bounce the ball up towards the pin because here, even though we do have a very crappy ball guideline with the Thorn level 5, it will still show the ball guideline to the hole, which is a very good benefit even those for us that do play with lower level clubs. So spin to pin is a classic. So I'm using the spin that is necessary to get the ball guideline to hole, and then I'm going to play with a minus 10% under adjustment which is due to the fact that we're going to play this shot uphill so minus 10 percent under adjustment hit perfect and this ball is going to be very close or get in the hole in this case right that pin for a beautiful eagle to start with on hole number one the first par three of the park de paris oh it's rhymes <laughs> two bars of side spin and uh, 2.8 bars of backspin. You can see that I'm looking here now to have the red ring by the rough line with the second bounce to be just in the line between the dark and the bright green square row. Trying to have the ball guideline to point a little bit right of pin when the wind is coming right to left. Obviously, if the wind coming left to right, I would try to move a little bit more left to aim left of pin so I'm not going to miss miles to the right. Max plus 10, even though we're not in max distance, I like to use the max uh, value as a reference. So max plus 10 in adjustment. And we do have a Quasar ball once again, which is a power one ball, free to play ball. Bounce on the fairway up towards the green. And this one rolls straight up pin for a beautiful hole in one. And when we do play with a backbone, we do not have a good ball guideline, which makes this shot to be much more difficult than what it would be if we would be playing with a Grizzly that do have a good ball guideline. So choose the long iron with the best ball guideline in my bag, that's the backbone. But Grizzly level seven plus is definitely going to be far superior.
For hole number three, we're going to go aggressive with our drive. And I want you to play with a ball that you have power five if possible. And the power five here is the Berserker ball, which you can win for free in the golden shot. So if you haven't played the golden shot yet, make sure you do so before the time runs out. So you at least can get a couple because there is such a value in having that extra distance so you can play an aggressive drive like here in the video instead of having to back up and bounce over the rough sand the rough there is a lot of things which could technically become a big issue in the end max plus 10 push up to max and then we're gonna play with close to max overpower here and the reason I play with close to max overpower is because I only have four and a half bar topspin. Those of you that do have the possibility to play with six bars of topspin can decrease the overpower a little bit more. And then obviously the drive will be even more simple, not even more, but the drive will be simpler than what it would be if going with more overpower, obviously. Now, second shot, I want you to have packed the Guardian. And the Guardian is going to be a key club here to actually give us a very decent chance for an Albatross. You can see that I'm adding max backspin, one left spin. And I'm aiming for the top left of the green. I'm not aiming for the pin. I'm aiming for the top left of the green because there is a big funnel there. And with a funnel, I mean that there is a spot that is a very forgiven spot, which will take the ball towards the hole. So even if you hit a perfect or great left or a great right, you will still have a chance to get that ball into the hole. You can see we get up to the top. It kind of takes this little road already, uh, already pointed out for itself when it comes to the ball and getting into drop dead center from Albatross. And the reason I know that there is a funnel there is because this is a shot that is played in the other divisions as well. And we have played this hole before, which means that, you know, I know that's how it works, which is the beauty obviously here now when we're trying to learn how to play the courses be uh, holes before we play the Parc de Paris as the course. So pack the Guardian, very important, and you will have a chance for an Albatross. If you don't pack the Guardian, then you're gonna have to aim for the pin and then the Albatross chances decreases massively. Hole number four, I'm deciding to go aggressive. And the reason for that is that trying to play on the fairway is going to be basically saying, okay, I give up the hole in one, let me take the birdie. But I wanted to give you a way to attack the pain for a hole in one. Then you have to decide, either you do this or you're not. Then you obviously going to just play for the birdie. One uh, left spin, and then we're going to play in this case with two bars of top spin. Ball guideline to be through the hole, very important, otherwise you will fall short. Medium distance with a 10% over adjustment, power one ball settings, which is going to give you 2.7 rings for this adjustment. Our intention here is to obviously hit the rough to roll down towards the pin. And once again, this is an ag aggressive line. And luckily in this case, I'm hitting a great ball because I do misadjust my shot. And it gets uh, right into the hole for an all in one. We can be lucky with a great ball, obviously, but that means that we did misadjust our shot. I would recommend to play medium distance plus 10 and do it properly, not like I did in the video. But again, the rough bump is far superior any other play here trying to get the hole in one on hole number four. For hole number five, we're gonna come to another par four, which is gonna be a very, very good chance for an eagle. I would like us to play with a power three ball in headwind or crosswind, but when we do have tailwind, a power two ball is going to be enough. I'm using a little bit of top spin, two bars of side spin to the right, but most importantly, I'm looking to just have the ball guideline centered down the fairway. Adjustment is going to be maximum distance plus 10 and once again the idea is to get the ball down the fairway to position ourselves to be just before the two bunkers. Perfect ball which is nice and then you will see that the first bounce will be on the fairway and it rolls down towards the two bunkers and this is an absolute perfect spot. Now there is two ways of attacking the pin here. For those of you that do play with lower level clubs, then you should pay close attention to what I'm doing here. If you do play with a Thorn level eight plus or maybe with a Hornet level eight plus or maybe, you know, with a short iron that do have 4.0 ball guideline or better, then you shall try to catch the funnel. Unfortunately, when you don't have the 
ball guideline to it, which we don't here with uh, the Thorn level 5, we can't really play the way that I would like to. So then we have to improvise, then we have to play directly on green instead of bouncing on the fairway pad that is before the pin, uh, before the green. So I'm using two bars of backspin, leaving the ball guideline short, as that is also a crucial thing when you don't have a fully developed ball guideline, that if you aim for the hole with a crappy ball guideline, then you will always come in hot and you will hit the pin and bounce out. You have probably done that a couple of times because I've done that too. And it's very easy to do when the club is underdeveloped. Adjustment is 10% over adjustment through club distance. What that means is that you move your target down to minimum distance, then up to maximum distance, trying to make an educated guess on how on what club range you're in. So for an example, if you feel that you are in 25% of your club range with your landing spot, then you play it 25% club. And that's the same if you are in 75%, etc. So 10% elevation, true club distance, ball guideline pointing towards the hole, but short if you have a lower level, uh, lower level club like we have here in the video. And get in a hole. For hole number six, we're going to have one of the tougher of the holes to get a drop. At. So hole number six, hole number five is definitely the tougher of the holes of the part de Paris. I'm going to go two bars of left spin, as much top spin possible here, and I would like us to play with the sniper as the second shot club, and you will notice why when we do play the second shot. Ball guideline to point straight down the fairway, and here I would somewhat as well recommend to go with as much top spin possible. So even if you have more than four and a half bar top spin, use all the top spin that you can. Max plus 10 as we're not in complete max distance. The true elevation is really 20 but is, as we are not in max distance club I want us to still play max plus 10 to have an easier way to follow an adjustment. Ball down the fairway and again we're looking to get the ball to be as far down the fairway possible because that's going to leave ourselves up with a sniper towards the pin and I'm not saying that this is going to be an easy shot not at all it's far from really uh, we are looking to aim just by the edge of the green because we want to take the advantage of the slope that is um, that is on the left side of the green to just roll up onto the green, fall down towards the pin. All side spin that you can, and here comes the katana ball to be important as we have side spin three. So a couple of clicks of backspin and then the side spin to the right to try to get, you can see the ID here, to try to get the ball to roll down towards the pin. Again, it's a very difficult uh, shot to drop, so I'm not expecting many drops here, but you play with no elevation, true club distance, and you're going to be somewhere between medium and maximum distance of your club. And eagle is the most likely outcome on hole number six. When it comes to hole number seven, we are just going to lay up very short on the fairway on the right because we do have a plan and we need to think about, you can see the trees that is there by the green. I'm going to talk more about that because it is very easy for us to use a better club here to bounce the ball over to the second fairway, but you need to be careful because the trees there could come into play in a very bad way. So. We start at complete minimum distance. I'm using a quasar ball and I'm using the quarterback level seven. So four backspin, two bars of right spin. You can see that I'm using the red ring to be just by the rough line to the right in complete minimum distance. Adjustment shall be minimum distance plus 10. And then we shall take our shot without using any type of curl overpower or underpower. Bounces nicely on the fairway and we're looking to just have this ball to stop there into the final piece of shadow if possible. Obviously this may be a little bit too close to comfort but you know maybe to back up just a little bit after that just again we are safe but you know I'm picky as you have already probably noticed when you're watching my videos. Now second shot here comes the reason to why we do lay up because I could technically bounce over the water easily as you could notice but then the trees will 100% be in play so I would then not have a shot towards the pin if lay up as we're doing here now we can bounce under the tree without having any risk of clipping the tree at all so that's what I'm gonna do I'm going to check where my minimum distance club are or like where my minimum distance are and where my maximum distance are go without any spin and aim for the hole 
and this is going to be played with 15% over adjustment so it's a little bit more downhill than what the drive are and that's very important as well to have in mind so leaving the ball guideline short as I don't have a fully developed ball guideline is once again crucial we have talked about that a lot in this video already and it bounces and it bounces and it rolls right that pin for a beautiful eagle here on a tough hole at number seven for those of you that do have higher level clubs then you can also meaning that you do have at least 60 in stat in curl so that would be you know lower level apocalypse and stuff like that then you can play we're gonna take off the drive again just to give that as a as a reference then you can play on the left side of the bunker using curl to kind of get the ball to roll past the trees on the left side to have an open shot towards the pin with your wedge or with your short iron that drive is gonna be tougher to do because you need to have the distance correct because if you don't get far enough then the trees will be in your way and then you're screwed so then you can obviously use a top spin uh, top spin club like the big topper try to roll past the trees but that's going to be impossible in headwind so there is some alternatives here in hole number seven but i would say that the general way to play is the one explained and displayed in the video here so let's get in the hole and have some fun on hole seven For hole number eight, we're gonna play with the backbone and a mauling. The mauling is a beautiful ball to waste, especially when we do have a good chance for a drop with it, because it's a free to play ball and very frequently uh, seen in free chest and uh, you know regular chest and stuff like that. So I'm using uh, some backspin. I'm using one right spin as well. Ball guideline to be just short of hole to make sure we do have room for the ball to roll out towards the pin because we don't have a fully developed ball guideline. And I know I talk about that a lot, but it is important. When we don't have a full developed ball guideline, leave the ball guideline short so you don't come in too hot. Max plus five is what I'm adjusting, bouncing on the fairway up towards the pin, right that pin for a beautiful hole in one on a tough par three, because this one is a tough one. This is not one that I do expect to drop all the time, but if we can follow the structure that I did explain to you about the shot with the backbone, with the max plus five, with the all in and spins, then you're definitely gonna have a good chance all the time to get the ball to drop. For hole number nine, this is going to be a difficult part five where we are only playing for an eagle, in my opinion. So what I'm going to do here is to use the quarterback to give myself a good accuracy and a good ball guideline to follow. Three left spin and one and a half bar top spin. And you can see here now that I'm aiming for the ball guideline to be at the top left of the fairway. The more you push this drive, obviously the more difficult it will be to get the ball to stay on the fairway. So make sure that you give yourself room to play this shot without rolling into the rough. Because I can tell you to 100% certainty that if you roll into the rough, you will not reach to the green on the second shot. So it's better to play up a little bit short and then have room. You can see here that I'm pushing the drive here, but I feel comfortable with that. That's why I'm doing it. But getting around 10 yards shorter on that shot is not going to be the end of the world you will still be able to get yourself to the green area anyway obviously having headwind is going to make it even more complicated as then you cannot take the advantage take an advantage of the wind in that case so what i'm doing on the second shot here is that i'm using all the top spin that i do have on my club and all the side spin to the right and aiming between the two trees and you can see here now that when I'm stretching out, I'm looking for the second bounce to be just above the rough line to make sure then that I'm not going to clip the rough two times and maybe get stuck into the rough uh, in an unlucky way. Medium distance uh, to maximum distance, depending on what club distance you have, it's most likely going to be maximum distance club, half a ball of curl, and whatever overpower that you do adjust into. And here you can see that I'm nowhere close to getting an albatross, and that's not the idea, because this hole is played, in my opinion, too tough, and we need to have that in mind when we are, uh, when we are playing. Uh, that shot that we're playing it for an eagle we're not playing for an albatross so take it easy and get your eagle and be done with it 
Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough with various win for rookie division in the big top tournament here in Golf Clash the game. Make sure that you go and get yourself our ultimate tournament package which we do have a pro expert and master uh, on patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy you have the link directly in the description down below. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and I want here in the end wish you the best of luck in your Golf Clash game.